Howdy. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about trig sub, okay? Uh, but before we get into a couple of problems, there's actually several things that we need to talk about before we get into an actual practice problem. And the first thing that I want to talk about are these substitutions. Now, there are going to be three scenarios that you're going to see. You're going to see an x squared plus a squared. You're going to see an a squared minus x squared and you're going to see an x squared minus a squared, where a is just some number, okay? Now, if you see x squared plus a squared, your substitution is going to be that x is equal to a tangent theta. If, instead, it's a squared minus x squared, you're going to have that x is equal to a sine theta, and if you have x squared minus a squared, you're going to have x is equal to a secant theta. Now, here's the way that I remember it. Um, I don't care how you do it, you know, do your own thing. But uh, the way that I remembered them was it's either going to be a tangent or start with an s. And if you see a plus, it looks like a t, so tangent. Whenever you take this, you change the sign of the x, it's sine, and that one's secant. That's just the way that I did it whenever I took Cal 2. Um, but like I said, just make sure you know these substitutions. So what I want to do is, given some actual examples, let's see how we're going to set up our substitutions. Now I'm going to overkill this first one a little bit right now. That way the other ones are going to be a little bit easier. Whenever I see an x squared plus 16, the way that I'm actually seeing this whenever dealing with trig sub is I see this as x squared plus 4 squared. And so notice it's a plus, so it looks like a t, so tangent, and my a is 4. And so your substitution for this first one is x is going to be 4 tangent theta. Okay, so that's that one. For the second one, let me show you the way that I see the second one. The way I see the second one, I see this as 3 squared minus quantity 5x squared. Now notice how I'm changing the sine of the x, hence it's going to be sine theta. Now, the way that this is going to work is you're going to take the inside, which is 5x, and set this equal to my a, which is 3 sine theta. So that's how you're going to deal with substitutions like that. And finally, let's take a look at this. x squared minus 6x plus 10 is... Ooh, let's not in any of these forms. What's going to happen is, in order to put it into one of these forms, you're going to need to complete the square. So let's talk about completing the square real quick. So let's talk about the x squared minus 6x plus 10. Um, I know completing the square was a while ago, but the way that I complete the square is I insert this template. And this template that you're going to have is you're going to have x plus or minus something squared. Don't forget to drop this down, this 10 minus something else squared. And the number that goes inside both parentheses is the exact same number. And it's the number that I get when I divide the x term by 2, or the x coefficient. And so a negative 6 divided by 2 is a negative 3. And so a negative 3 goes inside both parentheses. Therefore, this is going to be x minus 3 squared. And then 10 minus this negative 3 squared, that's a 9. So 10 minus 9 is 1. So that's how you complete the square. And so, changing this into x minus 3 squared plus, and that 1 is like 1 squared. Notice how it's a plus, looks like a t, it's going to be tangent. And your x is an x minus 3. So x minus 3 is equal to 1 tangent theta. So this is how you're going to do these substitutions. Now I'm not going to lie. Whenever we're going to finish with this problem, it's going to look pretty intense. If you dozed off in class and looked up on the board, and you're like, oh my goodness, what the heck just happened? So what I like to do with trig substitution is break it down into a three-step process, okay? And if you deal with this process uh, in this order, and you kind of break it down into small chunks, each small chunk isn't too bad. The first thing that you're going to do is substitute. Literally, what we just practiced doing was basically the first part of step one, and then after that, you're going to substitute into your integral. 
the next thing after that, once you take these substitutions, you're going to be left with a whole bunch of, you're going to be left with just basically a trig integral. And that was the last section. In the previous video, we learned how to do trig integrals. So make sure trig integrals are, you're comfortable with that because that, that entire problem is now just step two for trig sub. And then finally, the last thing you're going to do is you're going to put theta back in terms of x by making a right triangle based off your initial substitution. Okay? So, um, and I'll talk about that when we get there, but based off your initial substitution, you're going to create a right triangle, and based on this right triangle, that's how you're going to put theta back in terms of x. Okay, so hopefully we've got this background information down, because now, let's actually do a problem. And so, let's take a look at the, uh, the problem that I have here. What I want to do is I'm going to take the integral of x cubed times the square root of 4 minus x squared. Okay, so I see this 4 minus x squared as 2 squared minus x squared. And so, and because I'm changing the sign of the x, x is equal to 2 sine theta. Now from here, you need to find dx. dx is the derivative of x. dx, a lot of people forget this, is equal to 2 cosine theta d theta. A lot of people forget to solve for that dx, and that's going to jack everything up. So, once you have x and once you have dx, let's substitute it in. So, everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with 2 sine theta, and that dx doesn't disappear. That dx, you replace it with a 2 cosine theta d theta. And so, x cubed is going to be 8 sine cubed theta times the square root of 4 minus x squared is going to be 4 sine squared theta, and that dx, please, that doesn't disappear. That dx you solved for, and that dx is 2 cosine theta d theta. Okay. Now, at this point, you're always going to have some ugly algebra you got to deal with, and that's going to be wherever you'd substituted. And so what I like to do, off to the side, is I like to simplify this. That way I keep my integration, I keep my integral nice and neat. So any scratch work, do off to the side. Keep your integral nice and neat, straightforward. So let's take a look at 4 minus 4 sine squared theta. Well, I can factor a 4 out of here to be left with 1 minus sine squared theta. And based on our trig identities, we know that 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared theta. But wait, wasn't all of this all under a square root? Since all of this is all under a square root, the square root of 4 cosine squared is 2 cosine theta. So you are literally going to replace that entire term, the square root of 4 minus 4 sine squared, you're literally just going to replace it with a 2 cosine theta. So this will be the integral of 8 times sine cubed theta times 2 cosine theta, that's this one, times, and I've got this 2 cosine theta d theta, which all my constants, let's go ahead and multiply those together, and then cosine and cosine, what I'm going to be left with, 8 times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. Sine cubed theta times cosine squared theta d theta. And this was step one. Step one, all I wanted you to do was substitute. And remember, after that, you're going to be left with a trig integral. And that's all that I have here. What I have is the trig integral sine cubed times cosine squared, and we learned in the last video how to deal with those. Notice how here with the sine and cosine, at least one of them is odd. So the first thing we got to do is pull out an odd one. So I'm going to be left with and this right here. I'm just going to label them as steps. This is step one, and this is step two. This is the integral of 32, and because I, I pull out one of the odd ones, I'm going to be I'm going to have a sine squared theta, cosine squared theta. I pulled out that sine, the sine theta d theta. And then after you pulled out the odd one, you set u equal to the other one. I set u equal to cosine theta. And du, this is equal to a negative sine theta d theta. All right, so substituting this sine theta d theta right here, this, if I multiply by negative 1, is a negative du. This cosine squared theta um, is going to just be u squared. 
and s for this sine squared, if we remember our trig identities, if we remember that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, I can put sine squared in terms of cosine squared. Sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared, and because u is equal to cosine, 1 minus u squared. So the last thing I'm going to do is that 32 is just a constant. You can leave it on the outside. You see this negative and this u squared? I'm going to go ahead and distribute that into this parentheses right here. And so negative u squared times 1 is a negative u squared. And then negative u squared times a negative u squared, that's plus u to the fourth du, which, of course, is just the integral. Uh, if I distribute now the 32, we'll go negative 32u squared plus 32u to the fourth du. And now I can integrate. And so the integral of this is equal to negative 32 over 3 u cubed plus 32 over 5 u to the fifth plus c, which after I integrate, after I write my plus c, pull your thetas back in, and so your final answer, well, your final answer to the trig integral, okay, your trig integral is going to be negative 32 over 3 cosine cubed theta plus 32 over 5 cosine to the fifth theta plus c. And that was step two. And that's what we learned in the last video. In the last video, we learned how to do a trig integral, and that's why that was vital, vital before we get into trig sub. Okay, now that we've substituted, now that I've done my trig integral, the last thing that we needed to do was we needed to put those thetas back in terms of x by making a right triangle based off that initial substitution. And my initial substitution was x is 2 sine theta. And so I can technically rewrite this as sine theta is equal to x over 2. And remembering Sokotoa, sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So when I create this right triangle, opposite my angle, I need to put an x. Along my hypotenuse, I need to put a 2. And then just use Pythagorean theorem to find this third side. And if you did Pythagorean theorem correctly, this is going to be a, the square root of 4 minus x squared. And one cool way to check yourself, your third side will always be whatever you had originally substituted to begin with. So that's a great check. But now that I have all three sides, I could find whatever I want. I could find cosine, I could find tangent, I can find literally whichever one I want. But more specifically for me, what I need is I need cosine theta. Okay, My final answer, my integral had cosine thetas in it. And so if I want cosine theta, if I want cosine theta, remember, cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And so adjacent to my angle, square root of 4 minus x squared, and my hypotenuse is a 2. This is what cosine theta is equal to. And so now all you need to do is replace your cosine theta with this. And notice how I have cosine cubed theta. Just, just to make sure, you do know that cosine cubed theta is equal to the same thing as cosine theta the whole thing cubed. Those are the exact same thing. And so what I'm going to do here so I'm going to make this negative 32 over 3 times. And I'm literally just going to cube that entire cosine, which is this guy right here. So this is going to be the square root of 4 minus x squared over 2. All of that cubed plus 32 over 5 times my cosine square root of 4 minus x squared over 2 all to the fifth and then plus c. Like I said earlier, if we dozed off in class or we dozed off while watching this video and you all of a sudden look at this paper, you're like, oh my goodness. But here's the thing, is that's why I don't like teaching it all at once. Just first, substitute. You know how to do that. That was just nice and straightforward. Make sure you know your trig, uh, trig identities. Then, trig integral, which we learned how to do in the previous video. And then, you put your theta back in terms of x by making a right triangle based off that initial substitution, and then find whatever you're looking for. All trig subproblems 
follow this process. And as long as you follow it like this, you're going to be more than okay when dealing with TrickSub.